Welcome to this new video on coding with Flutter. This is a follow-up video about layouts in Flutter. In the previous video, I showed you an open source app that I've built to showcase layouts. Since then, I have expanded this app to include more examples. So in this video, we'll take a look at scrollable widgets and how you can use them to build more dynamic layouts. Before we start, we can head to the GitHub page for this project. And here you can find my updated demo with all the additional pages. So today we'll take a look at five additional pages that I've added here. And if you want a copy of the code as you follow along with this video, you can clone this repository here. Okay, so let's take a look at the new layout app. You can notice that I've added a button at the top left of the screen. And if you tap this, you can toggle between two different sets of layouts. So today we are going to take a look at this second set of layouts. I'll be talking about each of these in details, but uh, for now, let's just take a quick glance at them. So we have page view, list view, slivers, hero image, and nested lists. And so let's start with the first one, which is page view. Page view is a useful widget that you can use every time you want to present your content as a scrollable set of pages like this. So by default, the scrolling direction is horizontal, but you could configure it to be vertical. One thing to note about page view is that if we start scrolling and we release our finger, it will automatically complete the transition to the closest page depending on the motion and the position of the page. This is called page snapping and if you wanted you could disable it. Let's quickly head over to the code so that you can see how this is built. And this is actually very simple. So to build a page view all you need to do is define an array of children. So in this case I define an array of four children and each of them is created with this build page method, which specifies an index and a color and uses them to build a container with some text centered in the middle. Now page view is a widget that is often used to build features such as onboarding, where the user is taken through a set of pages and you could use this to explain what your app is about. Okay, so we are ready to move over to the next widget and that is called a list view. You can use a list view to show multiple items either vertically or horizontally. In this example, I show a list of contacts with names and emails and we can scroll over to show the complete list. So if we head over to the code, we can see how this list is built. And so here we have this thing called listview.builder. And builder is used to create a scrollable linear array of widgets that can be created on demand. So builder is appropriate for list items with a large or infinite number of children because the builder is called only for those children that are actually visible. So how does the builder work? Well, we can specify an item count and then in the builder code, we are given an index that we can use to reference the item that we need to render. So in this case, we index a contact in our array of contacts so contact is defined here as name and email, and we have an array of such contacts. And we use it to, to build a contact list title widget. Now, you can notice that contact list style extends from a class called list style. And if we look up the documentation for list style, it says that it is a single fixed height row that can typically contain some text as well as a leading or trailing icon. And this is exactly what we need for this use case as we use a simple circle avatar to show the initial of the contact name as well as a title and subtitle. If we wanted, we could have built our own contact list style from a stateless widget and we could have arranged our elements with a combination of rows and columns, but a list style really does the job here, so that's, that's what we're using. So for now, this is all I wanted to say about list view, so we can move to the next page, and this is called slivers. 
Now, I have borrowed the code for this page from the example code uh, for the custom scroll view class in the Flutter docs. So let's take a quick read at the docs. So this is the custom scroll view class. And what it says is a custom scroll view lets you supply slivers directly to create various scrolling effects, such as lists, grids, and expanding headers. For example, to create a scroll view that contains an expanding up bar followed by a list and a grid, use a list of three slivers, a sliver up bar, a sliver list, and a sliver grid. Now, this is the code for uh, this example, and this is exactly what we're using for our demo. So this is what it looks like. Notice how as we scroll the up bar on top shrinks and expands. And this is because the up bar has a flexible space and an expanded height value. The other thing to notice is that the up bar is always pinned at the top as we scroll. And this happens because the pin property here is set to true. Below the up bar in this page, we have two scrollable widgets. One is a sliver grid, this one, and the other one is a sliver fixed extent list, which we have defined here. Now, these are actually very similar to grid view and list view, which is what we might use if we had a regular grid or list that is not contained within a custom scroll view. You can also notice how both these classes require a sliver child builder delegate, which has a syntax that is very similar to the list view builder that we have seen in a previous example. So once again, we are given an index and we use it to create a widget that will be rendered for that index. It is possible to specify a child count, which is set to 20 for the grid, However, we don't actually specify a child count for the list, and this has the effect of creating an infinite list of items, so we could go on and on and on. You can also note that we haven't used a list tile here, uh, but rather created a standard container with a centered text inside. Now, this code here might look a little bit complex, um, so let's go through this once again. So at the root, we have a custom scroll view, and you can think of it as the container for all the scrolling content. Then we specify a sliver up bar, which is our pinned content at the top. And this is a widget that can expand up to the expanded height value via a flexible space. After this, we have a sliver grid and a sliver fixed extent list which are two widgets that can themselves render multiple items. Now, we are not finished talking about slivers and custom scroll views. However, I want to move on to the next page and show you a couple of interesting things that you can do with them. And in this instance, I will also talk about this delegate for your sliver grid. So let's move on to this page. So the idea here is to create an image that stays pinned at the top with some content overlaid above it. The top area itself can expand and shrinks. And this is followed by a list of images that are laid out in a grid. So let's take a look at how this is built. And as you can see, the structure of the code is similar to the previous example. We have a custom scroll view, which holds a sliver persistent header. And then we have a sliver grid which you, we use to show all our images. Now, the most interesting effect here is the hero image itself. So let's take a deeper look at how this is built. So if we were to look up the documentation for sliver persistent header, we find that it creates a sliver that varies its size when it is scrolled to the start of the viewport. And this is exactly what we need here. So we set the pinned property to true and then we had to provide a delegate, which is the hero header class that we have defined over here. This class must implement the sliver persistent header delegate interface. And this interface requires that we specify a few things. We need a max extent, a mean extent, a build method, a should rebuild method, and also a snap configuration object. 
For our use case, we only really care about the max extent and the min extent and the build method, while we can return true inside the should rebuild object uh, and null for snap configuration. So if you're interested to learn more about these additional properties, I encourage you to look them up in the documentation. But for now, let's just focus on what we need. Min extent is the height that we want our hero image to have when the user scrolls down to reveal more content, like this. Max extent is the height that we want at the beginning or when the user scrolls uh, back up. Now, we have passed these values in uh, from the build method of our hero page. So over here, we have 150 points for min extent and 250 points for max extent. Okay, so next is our build method, and this is where things get really interesting. So we need to render our image with a text on top of it and our button to switch layouts up here. Now, as we have learned in the previous video, this can be done with a stack widget. So we create our stack here and pass a fit value of stack fit dot expand to ensure that the stack widget itself takes up all the space available from its parent. Then the first thing that we need is our image. And by the way, I've bundled all the images that you see here within this project uh, so that you can load them with the image asset method. Uh, for the image, we are going to specify a fit value of boxfit.cover, which ensures that the image covers the entire target box. Next, we have a gradient that is positioned at the bottom of the image, and we use this to ensure that the hero image text is clearly legible. And let me show you what I mean. So if I comment out the gradient code, uh, you can see how the bottom of the image changes. So let's hot reload. And you see the background is now a lot lighter. So let's put this code back and we're back to normal. Now the code over here is used to add a subtle gradient between the image and the text. And this is a design technique that is often used to increase the contrast between the text and its background. So here we are using a linear gradient to get the desired effect. And if you want to know more about gradients, make sure to check the documentation. Now, the last two widgets that we want to talk about uh, are two uh, position widgets. Now, the first one is to show our layout toggle button up here. And the second one is the hero image text widget. One final note is that uh, we use this uh, safe area widget over here. And it is important to use this every time we need to add padding to our widgets so that they don't clash with UI that might be added by the operating system. So for example, on iPhone X, we have this top notch and some system UI on top. And if we don't use safe area, we would end up clashing here. Uh, so let's see what would happen if I remove this and a hot reload, you see how this top button now is, is across the time indicator in, in the status bar. So that's what safe area is for. And just as a quick refresher here, so we use positioned uh, because we want our widgets to be positioned on the top left corner for this button and on the bottom left corner for uh, our text uh, within our header. So that covers uh, everything that we need to know in order to create a hero image. Now, I think it's time to go back and talk about uh, grids again, and particularly this grid that I've added to the page. So for this demo, we have a list of images that we want to display, and they all have the same size. So what we do here is render an image asset for each item of the grid, and we specify that this is added inside a container so that we can add a little bit of padding. Now I have defined a list of images over here and within our builder, we cycle through the available names and repeat the sequence a couple of times by uh, specifying the desired child count over here. When we define a grid, we are also able to specify some additional properties such as the main cross axis extent, the main axis spacing, the cross axis spacing, 
and the child aspect ratio. So I encourage you to play a bit with these values and see how they affect the layout of the grid. Okay, so we're all good. I think this page looks really good right now. And this code gives you all the building blocks that you need to build something similar in your apps. So let's move on to the next page, uh, which is about nested list views. So what this page does is render a list view where each item is a list view itself. And you can see that they scroll independently. So you might use something like this if you want to independently scroll content in the X and Y axis. And so for example, if you wanted to show a list of movies grouped by genre, this is a layout that you consider using uh, as each row is a genre and you can see the movies within it. So let's take a look at how this is built. So at the top level, we have a list builder, which is used to render eight rows. Then each row builds a list view that has five items and scrolls horizontally. And finally, we do a little bit of magic with the index of each tile to offset the colors on each row. Now, one thing that is required here is that each row has a fixed height uh, and we do this by wrapping the horizontal list within a sized box. If we don't do this, we'll get a layout error telling us that the horizontal viewport was given unbounded height. So be aware of this. One way to solve this is to make the height fixed with a sized box, as we have done here. Okay, so this concludes our overview of scrolling widgets for today. So let's do a quick recap. We have explored page view as a way of scrolling a list of pages. We then talked about list view and how it works and how it comes with a convenience list style widget that can be used to build simple layouts like this. Now, one thing that I want to mention is that whether you use page view, list view or grid view, you can always choose to use them with or without a builder. So these widgets all have a default constructor that takes an array of children, but they also have a builder constructor, which is what we should use to render a large number of items. So the builder pattern is something that is actually common across various widgets in Flutter. Okay, next we have talked about slivers and how uh, to fit scrollable content within a container's custom scroll view. I've shown you how you can use some of these widgets to create a nice hero image effect. And finally, we have seen how to nest multiple list views inside each other. So if you want to learn more about scrollable widgets, I encourage you to check this page on the official docs. And here you can see what other widgets are available. I would also to invite you again to check out the Git repo for this uh, project and um, you can download the code and see how it works. And finally, if you head to my website, codingwithflutter.com, I've added a Flutter layout cheat sheet that you can get for free if you sign up. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, make sure to ask me, and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next videos.